Welcome back guys. I have a super fun video for you today. Something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite fall TV slash movie night snacks. And then we're going to head on over to my living room and we're going to talk about some of my favorite fall TV shows. So I thought this was queso and I asked you guys on Instagram if you guys prefer eating like nachos or queso on movie night and a ton of you guys were telling me that it's the same thing. So we're going to be making nachos slash queso. I'm using my instant pot but you can use a slow cooker if you have it. Um, if you are going to use your instant pot just make sure to put it on the slow cooker setting. I'm going to be lining my pot with this. This is the Reynolds kitchen slow cooker liner and these are awesome when you're making any kind of cheese sauce so it doesn't stick to your pot and it just makes cleaning up so much easier because you literally line your pot with it and once you're done making your food you just toss this out so put your pot like this and you put the um, plastic like that. The only prep work that you have to do for this cheese sauce is to um, brown your meat. I like using a mixture of ground beef and then chorizo. So just kind of brown up 50-50 of each or you can use all ground beef if you want. And once it's nice and browned up, I will add taco seasoning to it and just let that cook on the stove. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my pot. And then I have one entire container of like Velveeta cheese. I just cut it up into like little cubes like this and add that into our pot. I also use the Rotel mix, the one that comes in the can, and I like to use one small can of the spicy one and then one small can of just the original. And I will put that in there. And if you want it to be like super creamy, go ahead and add some milk to that. So I add, I add about one cup of milk. So when I turned the pot on, my entire kitchen electricity just went out. <laughs> so I decided to go get myself a Topo Chico and give it a few minutes. Um, so let's try this again. You guys can't see this, but I have two light boxes, a ring light, my mic hooked up, another camera over there. If you are making this for like a game night or anything like that, definitely set this up like an hour before everybody shows up if you want it to be ready in time, because the cheese does take a little bit of time to melt and all that. And just, um, just... Okay, the Instant Pot has been evicted to the back counter. There's a separate plug back there, so hopefully we can have power for the rest of the video. Okay, so um, this is my favorite drink ever. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about this forever, but this is Topo Chico, and it's basically, it's like seltzer water, but with like a lot of carbonation. If you guys like that burn that you get from like a Coke, this is like a hundred times better than that. And it satisfies your craving for all kinds of soda. Like it is so good. Let's move on to popcorn, which is obviously an essential for movie night. Um, so I'm gonna share with you guys two recipes. The first one does involve you turning on the stove and it is to die for you guys. Like my husband got so excited right now when I told him I was making it for the video because he is obsessed with it too. But this is the popcorn that I've been using and it's really good. It is gonna look like your popcorn is a little bit burnt. Um, but it's not. It's just because the kernels are dark. And the trick to getting perfectly cooked popcorn every single time is to add your oil to the pot, put it on high, and then add about one to two kernels in there and wait for those kernels to pop. As soon as they pop, take them out and then add your popcorn and then put the lid on it. This way, all of your popcorn is gonna be cooked evenly and none of it is gonna get burned. Once I add all my popcorn in there, I give it a good shake so that the popcorn is all nicely laid out and then I just put the lid on it and let it do its thing. Um, it usually doesn't take more than like a minute for all of it to pop and as soon as you start to hear it like slow down, that's when you want to turn the heat off. This is about half a cup of the kernels. So if you guys wanna make more than this, then definitely go the full cup. Half a cup is usually pretty good size for me and my husband. Now for the sauce that is seriously addictive, you just need butter, avocado oil, or you can use olive oil, um, brown sugar, and sriracha. So you wanna start off by melting your butter. Once my butter gets nice and golden brown, I'm gonna go ahead and add my oil and then just let it kind of warm back up. 
Um, the whole time I do have the stove on medium heat, by the way, you don't need it. You do not need to have it on super high heat. Once my oil and butter is nice and warm, I will go ahead and add my brown sugar. And um, you wanna make sure that the brown sugar gets nice and dissolved with that butter and oil. And then at the very end, add your sriracha, but be careful because it does splatter because of the oil. Be really, really careful. Um, at this point, you can turn the stove off and just kind of let that simmer down. This is what it looks like. You can see it does look a little bit um, clumpy and that's from the sriracha and that is perfectly okay. Then we're just gonna add all of that to our popcorn. Just make sure you stir it a little bit at a time. And then what I like to do, oops, is put that back in the pan. So I can really get all that butter and especially the sugar. The sugar starts to caramelize and it kind of sticks to the pan a little bit. Go ahead and try it. That sugar is going to crystallize and caramelize over the popcorn. So you're gonna get a little bit of like a caramel popcorn type of flavor to it. And then the spiciness from the sriracha. Just sriracha goes so good with like sweet stuff. So it's just really, really good. And it makes your house smell amazing. So good, you guys. Okay. I'm gonna show you guys my personal way of eating popcorn. I would consider this a little bit healthier because there's no butter. And I just wanna tell myself that. <laughs> so this works the best if you guys do it right as your popcorn is fresh so it's nice and hot because it's gonna help melt the cheese and get that oil nice and warm. If your popcorn is already cold, then what I would do is warm up your oil for like 10 or 15 seconds in the microwave and then put it on top so that your cheese can get nice and melty. We're gonna grate our cheese on top. Parmesan cheese, and I like to grate it fresh, although you could totally use the canned kind if you wanted to because it actually tastes really good with that too. I'm going to do our chili flakes. And this one is totally optional. If you like the taste of truffle, this is a really good powder. Um, this one doesn't have any salt, so it's great for popcorn. Black pepper. When I make it for my husband, I do have to take the truffle out because he does not like truffle, and it's just as good without the truffle. Okay, and then we are going to add some of that parsley. If it does still need a little bit of salt, you can add some finishing salt to it. And this is the one that I like to use. I actually found it at H-E-B, but it's like larger crystals of salt. And what I like about this is that as you bite into it, it actually crunches. So it makes your popcorn even better, which I don't know how it's possible with all these amazing ingredients, but it does. <laughs> you know what? I think it needs more cheese. What do y'all think? You see how the cheese actually sticks if your oil is warm, it actually sticks to every piece of popcorn. I take it back, you guys. You have to use the fresh Parmesan cheese. It is, mm, it's so good. This is so good. I hope you guys try either one of these popcorn recipes and then let me know what you think. Okay, so while the cheese is still cooking, we're gonna head on over to the living room and talk about some of my favorite shows. Okay, so we're gonna start off with Netflix because I feel like that's what everybody watches the most. I either like really like fun chick flick type of shows or like crime solving shows, like there's no in between. So Criminal Minds is my most recent obsession. There's a total of 13 episodes on Netflix and I believe that they are they do have the 14th on live TV, I may be wrong, but I refuse to watch it on live TV because I cannot be left with giant cliffhangers. I need to know what happens next all the way to the end of the season. So I'm gonna wait until they put the next one on um, Netflix. What makes this show so good though, it's um, it's more about profiling the criminals and like uh, trying to figure out why they committed these crimes and how you can stop them just based on a profile that they build on this person. So it's so interesting because I feel like I've actually learned a lot about um, like psychology, like just about people in general. And I'm not gonna lie you guys, it's also made me like a little bit paranoid 
like just a little bit. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I think it's good to be a little bit aware <laughs> of your surroundings. Um, but this show has made me like extra aware. My favorite character is Reed from the show, if you guys watch it. I just love his personality. I think he's just so endearing and he's so smart. And <laughs> it's just so cute to watch how he's like socially awkward because he's, you know, he's just so intelligent. Okay, so let's move on because I could literally talk about Criminal Minds forever. Another crime show that I watched all the way through, um, it's Dexter. If you don't like blood and stuff like that, then don't watch it. Um, but if you don't mind it, Dexter is really good. Dexter is basically told from the perspective of the actual killer, but basically he's a serial killer and he can't control his urges to kill. So instead of just randomly killing innocent people, he targets other criminals. And it also has a really good storyline. There was actually a point in the show where I stopped, me and my husband both stopped watching it because there was a death in the show at one of the characters that we were really, really upset about. So we needed a little bit of time away from the show because it was upsetting that they took that character away from us. Uh, but then we went back to it a week later and we binged the rest of it all the way through and it's so good. The way that the show ended, it kind of leads me to believe that they're gonna have another, um, like another season or a comeback or like something. I don't know, what do you guys think? I feel like they kind of left those doors open and I'm hoping that they are because it was a really good show. Um, the third crime show that we really like is SVU, which is um, the Special Victims Unit. The more recent episodes, I feel like they've gotten a little bit more graphic than they were in the previous years, but it's really good. It's really well written. Um, it's one of those shows that if you like solving crimes and you like trying to guess who the killer is, this is a really good one to watch for that. Okay, so let's get into some like more lighthearted, fun, um, just girly type of shows. So the first one is Jane the Virgin. I I love Jane the Virgin. It's just a really like fun comedy. It's like a English novella. That's like the best way I can put it because it is it is a little bit cheesy at times, but it's really funny and it's really cute. 90210 is a show that I watch right after I was done with Gossip Girl. It's really good. It's basically like just like Gossip Girl, but like the California version of it. So the fashion is a little bit different, the culture is different, but you have some of the same type of like drama. Um, one Day at a Time is a really funny one. It's, um, it's just like a sitcom basically. I wanna say that the main characters are from Cuba. They're Hispanic, um, I can definitely relate to them. They could be from Panama because of the, their culture. Uh, so I really like it because I feel like there's not a lot of sitcoms out there that um, like Hispanic people can relate to. It's so funny because the grandma kind of, the grandma in the show reminds me of like what my mom is gonna be like when she's that age. I hope she doesn't get mad at me for saying that, but it's true. She's very like, she's always done up. She always has her makeup on. She's like very much about like looking good, which I think is true for a lot of like Latin cultures. Like you're just used to dressing up and looking your best and all of that. This is a really cute one. It's called Young and Hungry. And it's basically about this girl that um, she's an aspiring chef. Um, so she gets hired as a personal chef for this like super wealthy tech guy. And of course he's like young and good looking. So she ends up falling for him. It's a little cheesy, I'm not gonna lie, but it's just one of those shows that I like to have on when I'm like doing other stuff. So these are the shows that we're watching right now. Um, Modern Family, which is, we love Modern Family, it's so good. I also love um, Blackish, which I don't know if that's coming back this year. I don't remember seeing it in my lineup. So there's two new fall shows that I wanna watch. Um, the first one is called Single Parents, which I did watch one episode, and it was pretty funny. It's, uh, I think, what's her name? It. The girl from Gossip Girl, Blair, she's in the show, which I thought, hmm, I don't know how this is gonna work, but it's actually pretty funny. It's really, really cheesy, but if you don't mind cheesy comedy, it's really good because it still kind of has a storyline, but there are cheesy moments in the show. Um, I'm gonna keep giving it a shot because it's funny. I feel like there hasn't been a show like that where it's like from the perspective of nothing but single parents. Um, so it looks really good. And there's another one. Oh, A Million Little Things. I haven't started watching it, but it looks really, really good. Let me know if you guys watch that one. And that one comes on ABC. Actually, they both come on ABC. I feel like all the good fall TV comes on ABC. Um, I think those are all the shows that I wanna to talk to you guys about. Let me know if you have any recommendations for me, like whether it's fall TV or Netflix or Hulu. We have Hulu too. Actually, you know what? The cheese should be done by now. So let's head back into the kitchen and see how it's doing. So this is ready. This is what the cheese sauce looks like once it's ready. Everything is melted together really nicely. I just added my chips. I don't even mind the crumbles. 
You could throw some jalapenos on top. It would be so good. But the sauce, you guys see that? Seriously, so good. Mmm. And this is such a hit during game days too. So I know it's like football season right now. You guys could totally make this. You could surprise your hubby or your significant other and make that for them. They'll love it. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you like this new type of video and I can definitely do more. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.